Hello and welcome to my tutorial for editing your reef tank photos in Lightroom. Uh, if, you've, if you don't have Lightroom, the program, um, it's a great investment to get. I think it's one of the best photo editing programs out there, especially for uh, editing reef tank photos. It has a lot of useful tools, so I'm going to cover some of those tools in this video. Um, even if you've edited photos in Lightroom before, maybe you'll learn something that's useful for reef tank stuff in particular. So if you've never seen Lightroom, this is what it looks like. You have your uh, different tabs, I call them up here. Um, basically, you're going to work from left to right. You're really only going to use library and develop. So the first thing you want to do when you open this program is make sure you're on the library tab. So the library tab is going to show you all the photos that you have imported into Lightroom. Those are all the photos you can work with. So what I've done is I've taken my memory card off from my camera and actually transferred all the photos over to my hard drive first. Uh, I don't like to import photos directly from the camera to Lightroom because if you unplug the photo or something, or sorry, unplug the camera or something in the middle of it, you know, you might lose your photos or it's just, it's just a little slower to work with. So I definitely recommend transferring them over. Once you have your photos transferred to your hard drive, you go over here to this button. Uh, it says import. So you click on import and it's going to bring up another window. And this has a bunch of directories over here. So you just find uh, wherever you stored your photos. I like to keep my fo um, all my photos organized. In this case, let's see, I believe I put them under videos. There we go. So once you find your folder with all your videos in there, uh, it's going to, a little screen with thumbnails will pop up like this. Everything that's checked will get imported. So I took some photos, not going to import this as a video. I took some photos just for this tutorial. I have not imported them yet, so this is what it's going to look like for you. So, um, all the photos I want to import are right here. So all you got to do, make sure they're all clicked or checked, and then you hit import. So Lightroom will import them, and you'll see at the bottom here all the thumbnails are going to appear. So I have 13 photos, um, and notice there's no icons on them or anything, right? So once I start messing with them, change the exposure and all that stuff. Uh, you're going to see little icons down here to let you know that you edit, edited them already. So if you haven't, it's it's a good tool because if you're editing like 100 photos, then it's easy to go back and see which ones you haven't touched yet. So anyway, once you have the photos imported into your library, you go over here to the Develop tab. So Develop, as the name implies, is where you actually develop the photos. So here's my first one. I've purposely taken these photos without editing the white balance or anything because if you've ever tried to take pictures of your tank before, you notice they always come out too blue because our lighting is always blue that we use. So I, you really don't even need to fix your white balance on the camera itself because you can just do it in Lightroom and it's a lot easier in Lightroom. And on top of that, you usually can't swing your color temperature enough on the camera to get it correct anyway. So this is where Lightroom comes in. So like I said, I have not touched the white balance on these photos yet and they look way too blue right now. So all I gotta do, is uh, you're going to start with this. Every, all your tools are over here on the right. So you notice that when I close all these up, so this is what it's going to look like when you first get the program. This basic one's probably going to be open. So these are just the different categories of tools. The ones you're going to be using the most are basic and detail, really, just basic and detail. And also there's this little box right here, and that's the cropping, uh, the cropping tool. So... The first thing I always do when I open up my photos is I just make sure that, first of all, you know, you're normally going to take like five pictures of the same coral or fish. So what I do is just zoom in real close and make sure they look really, really sharp because if they don't look sharp, uh, the picture's not going to turn out that well. So if you've taken five photos of the same thing, just zoom in like this. All i got to do is click one time on this area. It'll zoom in all the way. So let's check if they're sharp. So look for the ones that's the sharpest. In this case, I already went through my photos and deleted the ones that weren't. So you make sure they're sharp. Second thing, so once you've decided which photo you're going to keep, and if you want to delete them, by the way, you get on here to the thumbnail, right click, delete photo, and it'll ask you, do you want to remove it from Lightroom's library or do you want to actually delete it off your computer? And uh, usually when I'm going through and editing, I don't like to keep a whole bunch of copies of bad photos. I'll just go ahead and delete them. So right now I'm going to keep that one though. So anyway, first thing you want to do, first thing I always do is crop it. So you click on this tool right here, it says crop overlay, and by the way, uh, you notice the all the settings I took this picture at are up here. So it has the ISO, the zoom, the aperture, and the shutter speed. So it's kind of cool. So you can always see what you took it at. 
Anyway, so first step, go to the crop tool. So this is the crop tool. So as you see if I'm uh, making it cropped in, you'll see this preview over here will actually give me a live preview of what it's going to look like when it's cropped, which is a really cool feature. So right now it's locked to the aspect ratio. That means it's not going to stretch vertically or horizontally. It's locked to a certain aspect ratio, and that aspect ratio is the original one. See, it says original right here. So that means it's keeping the aspect ratio that it was taken in. So this is a, f like if you're going to print out like a typical photo album picture, this is the right aspect ratio for that. But anyway, what I always like to do is you click this drop down box and it gives you a bunch of different options. Say I want this to be cropped to an 8 by 10 or an 8 and a half by 11. Say I was going to print it out. This is what I would select, 8 and a half by 11. So you notice that the crop box now is locked to that ratio, 8 and a half by 11. So Anyway, I usually like using my photos for desktop backgrounds, so what I do is I'm going to put them in a 16 by 10 ratio. That's right here. So you see that it's kind of like a widescreen looking thing. Um, but anyway, you don't have to do that. If you want to unlock this and be able to stretch it and get creative with your crops, all you got to do is click this. So you unlock it, and now I can crop it really however I want. So if you want to get a cool like banner for the forums or something, you can make it narrow. Or if you want to make a little avatar for your forum, you can make it small like that. But anyway, like I said, I'm going with 16 by 10. Notice the lock is locked over here. That means it's not going to allow me to stretch this out of the aspect ratio. Anyway, so like I said, first thing I want to do is I'm going to go ahead and crop this. So once I have something I like, you just drag it in the middle and move it around. I like it right there, so I'm going to hit the Enter key and that just cropped it for me. All right, so after I got it cropped, the next thing I'm gonna do is go to this basic tab. So I'm gonna click that, brings it down. You'll notice the first things you see here, it says WB, which stands for white balance, and it says as shot. That means that it's just gonna, it's locked the white balance to how I shot it, how I shot the photo. So this isn't correct, so I'm gonna go ahead and change it. So the first slider you see is temperature, that's your color temperature. This is a really important tip to learn. When you're correcting white balance, all you gotta do to correct the color temperature is slide this to the right. So you notice what happens is it's getting more, it looks like, if I go too far with it, it looks like I took it under like a yellowish like house bulb. So that's a little too, too far, but I'm gonna slide it a little bit to the right. And you just mess with this until it, see that's like way too blue obviously. You mess with this until it looks right to you. So I'm going to say about right there is probably about right. The tint, on the other hand, the tint you can't go too far with. Notice it's at plus 11 right now. So I'm going to keep, keep an eye on that. If you mess with the tint, you'll see it actually kind of changes the color too much. So it looks unrealistic. But you can actually play with this a little bit just to get it to look a little more correct. And... That looks about right, right there. And if you want to reset it to zero, all you do is click on this number. You type in zero, enter, or negative seven is where it was. So you can also type in values over here. All right, so next thing, once you got your color temperature solved, it's really easy to do, like I said. Um, next thing you do is the, the exposure. So right now, this one is pretty good exposed. It's not too dark, not too light. If you slide this to the right, it's gonna overexpose the photo. Slide to the left, it's gonna make it darker, obviously, underexposed. And by the way, I shoot all my pictures on the RAW format, um, but even if you don't shoot in RAW, you can still edit them pretty good. So if you do have the option to shoot in a RAW format, definitely do that because it makes all these options work a lot better for you. Okay, so I'm just going to leave exposure where it's at for now. Contrast, what this is going to do for you is it's the difference between the light and the dark in the photo. You notice I turn it to the left, the photo looks real washed out. If I turn all the way to the right, uh, it looks looks kind of cool but it looks a little too a little too crazy like uh, like there's real bright whites and real dark dark so contrast I'm not really even gonna mess with for now and I'll show you why in a second so that's what those two things do all right highlights this is highlights and shadows whites and blacks are the next four and this is what I love about Lightroom it has really cool easy to use tools for uh, that work really well for reef tanks so what you'll notice is a lot of times when you take a reef tank photo, um, you'll see that 
sometimes the top of the corals will be like really blasted out white, like way overexposed, and the bottom of the coral down here is going to be real dark. And it's a problem because the lights in our in our reef tanks are really intense, and as a result, you get like a real big light difference in the photo. You'll get real bright whites and real dark blacks. So the way to fix that is just go over here to the highlight slider, and if I slide this down, it's going to get rid of those highlights. And this photo, this particular photo isn't too bad, but I did take another one I can show you with. So highlights is going to, you notice the tips right here are kind of dulling out when I do that. So if I slide it down, slide it up, if I go real bright with it, you'll see that they get really bright. So notice the white areas, the light areas are what that's going to change. So this one's not too bad. If you lower it too much, it's going to make the picture look too flat, but you just kind of have to figure that out on your own. So I'm going to lower this. All right, normally going to lower it. Okay, shadows, as you might guess, shadows, you do uh, move that to the left, it's going to make the shadows darker. Move to the right, it's going to lighten the shadows, which again is going to make the picture look flat, but you just kind of have to mess with it. <clears throat> I'm going to leave it right there. I like to have a kind of a big difference between the light and the dark areas because I think it makes the picture look better. All right, the whites, this one's kind of similar to highlights, but <clears throat> it just makes things appear brighter. So you notice I move to the the right, and you see now the picture is real blown out. All these highlighted areas are all blown out. If I move it to the middle, that's how it's supposed to look. Look, move it all the way down. It looks real dull now, like right here. So <clears throat> you just again have to play with this stuff. Uh, the whites usually I do bump up a little bit because it kind of brightens up the photo a little bit, makes it look nicer. All right, and the blacks. <clears throat> the black slider will <clears throat> that controls how how dark the blacks are and this one's kind of useful usually what I do with this one is I'm gonna bump it down just a little bit so you see that now that I get a nice dark area down here nice coloration and above it it's nice and bright but it's not blown out if you noticed <clears throat> playing with these sliders actually did the same thing as messing with the contrast see if I move the contrast it kind of goes a little bit more extreme with it so that's basically like a fine-tuned control over the contrast. So I'm going to leave that at zero. Okay. So I think the picture looks pretty good for now. Um, the presence sliders down here, you don't really need to mess with too much. Uh, the only one you might want to mess with is saturation. I usually don't mess with saturation in my photos because usually the colors are pretty true to life. But occasionally your camera won't pick up the colors good enough. And you might have to bump it up a little bit. So let's see when I bump this up, it gets super unrealistically colorful. Uh, kind of cool looking, but uh, you, normally you don't really, really mess with that because, well, unless you're trying to make your corals look more colorful than they actually are. But like I said, sometimes I bump up a little bit just if my camera missed the coloration. Because <clears throat> unless you have a really expensive camera, chances are it's not going to get all those colors in the corals. Like this one got, has a good green base on it, and the camera got that okay. All right, so quick recap. Under the basic tab, you have color temperature, which you're going to want to slide to the right to correct for the blue of the lights. Tint is another color temperature controller. You just have to mess with that one, try to get it to look correctly. Um, that could go left or right, depending on the coral. Um, okay, exposure is how bright or dark the picture is. Contrast is the difference between the light and the dark areas of the photo. Highlights is all of the, the real light areas of the photo where the it's really brightly lit. And this one you're normally gonna wanna bring down a little bit. Shadows is all of the shadows in the uh, in the photo, obviously. And when you drag those down, it's going to make those darker. Uh, if you drag it up, it's going to brighten up the shadows. The whites slider, usually I'm going to bump this one up. It makes everything kind of seem a little brighter, like all the colors and everything. Uh, if you bump it down, it's going to flatten the photo out a little bit. And the black slider is going to control how dark the blacks are. Okay, so moving on from that. The next thing you need to mess with, so I've, I've covered all of my basic stuff. At this point, my photo is honestly pretty good. Like, I can be finished with it after I've cropped it and everything. But I always go down here to this tab right here. It says Detail. This one's really a really cool tool that they've integrated into Lightroom. Normally, you have to use a separate program to do this, but Lightroom has it. So you click this. Don't get confused by everything. What it's going to do is bring up this little preview window. And the preview window is a really close-up version of your photo. And if you, I don't know if you can see it in the video or not, but this is a little bit grainy, a little bit. When you shoot on higher ISO settings, you're going to get a lot of grain in here. So one way to check is just zoom in on your photo and look at it and say, um, check and see if you have a lot of grain or not. 
so I did take some photos later that I can show you a little bit better with this. But <clears throat> anyway, so if you have grain in the photo, which there's a tiny bit in this one, what you do is go to the detail tab. You go down here to where it says noise reduction and it says luminance. So that grain that you're seeing in digital photos is called luminance noise. And what that is, is just when you bump your ISO up on your camera, um, it just causes the picture quality to kind of degrade. So the luminance noise reduction is going to fix that. So right now it's at zero. What happens if I bump this up? I'm going to take it all the way to the extreme. You'll notice that all this grain back here is blurry now. And you'll also notice that all my detail on my coral polyps is lost now. <clears throat> so what this program does to fix the noise or the grain is it actually just kind of blurs it. So that's good if you have a grainy photo, but if you do it too much, it's, you're going to lose all your detail in your picture. So just to give you an example again, this is zero. So <clears throat> see if I can find a more obvious area here. Okay, so this is zero. I bump it all the way up. Watch the grain go away. Okay, so it's all gone, right? But it's, like I said, it looks muddy a little bit. So I don't ever use 100 like that. Um, <clears throat> what I do is just bump it up just a little bit. And this thing, by the way, once you let go of the sliders when it updates this photo, so you cannot see the difference unless you're zoomed in like this or unless you're looking at this little preview window. So once again, you cannot see the difference on the luminance reduction like, oh, hang on, like this. When the picture is zoomed out, you cannot tell. But if you zoom in all the way like this and you mess with the slider, you'll be able to tell. So I'm going to leave it at about 20 because that looks pretty smooth. You don't want to lose all your texture in a photo. Okay. <clears throat> So once again, to correct graininess in your photo, go to the Detail tab, and then mess with this Luminance Noise Reduction thing. You can play with these sliders if you want, but normally you don't have to. Just mess with the Luminance Reduction. Okay, last thing I'm going to uh, go over here is Lens Corrections. So this is something that's completely optional to use this, but I always do this. Uh, Lightroom has a built-in Lens Correction system where you, all you got to do is go to Profile, which it should already be on. You check Enable Profile Corrections. And you notice the, the pictures seem to kind of move towards us a little bit. What that does is every lens, when you take a picture, every lens has somewhat of a fisheye effect to it. Like it distorts the photo a little bit. And if you take a full tank shot, you're really going to notice this. Your tank won't look straight. It'll look curved. So if you come in here and you just hit Enable Profile Corrections, Lightroom will automatically detect the lens and camera you're using, and it'll correct for it. So it, when you take a full tank shot, it's going to look distorted. You hit this little check mark, and it'll straighten it out. It's really nice. So other than that, <clears throat> all I got to do is just come check this box, and that's pretty much it. Um, the other optional thing you can do, and you don't really have to do this, but you can go to color and hit remove chromatic aberration. And what chromatic aberration is, is I actually do have some of it in this photo. When you're not using like a top quality lens or camera, which none of my stuff is, you'll notice, see how there's this blue kind of ghosting here at the end of the coral? That's called chromatic aberration. It's like a ghosting around the edge. So all I got to do is check this little box. And it's not going to take it away all the way, but as you see, it kind of reduced it a little bit. And I can even raise the amount like this, and you'll see that it's going to get rid of it even more. See that? But at the same time, if you do it too much, it kind of discolors some of your photo. So that's just something to think about. So I'm gonna, I'll go ahead and leave that on. All right, so quick re recap again before I move on to another photo. So crop the photo first. You can pick whatever aspect ratio or whatever you want. Just drag it. Okay, once you have that done, you hit enter. That crops the photo. Still zoomed in a little bit. Okay, then you go to the basic tab. You correct your temperature. You're gonna move it to the right. It's always gonna be to the right. Okay, the tint you can play around with a little bit just to make it look correct. Exposure makes it brighter dim. Contrast is the difference between the lights and the darks. Highlights is the real well-lit areas of your photo. You're normally going to drag this down to pr correct for like a blown out looking photo. Shadows is how dark the shadows are. Whites are how bright the whites are. So it, it really helps the colors pop a little bit if you drag this up. And the blacks, you drag that down a little bit and it uh, makes the blacks a little darker. Okay, the other thing I went over was detail. You click on the detail pane, you go to luminance, noise reduction, drag this up. It'll correct for your graininess. And the last thing I did went to lens corrections, and just clicked on Enable Profile Corrections. Normally, you don't have to do chromatic aberration. That's kind of a more advanced thing. So just check that. 
All right, so that's pretty much it for all the basic skills of Photoshop. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to edit a few more photos uh, and show you how to uh, just apply these tools some more. But before I do that, before I forget, um, once you're done developing this photo, it's not usable in any other program. It just looks like this in Lightroom because I have not exported it yet. So what you want to do is, once you're completely done with this, you're going to go down here to the thumbnail. See how it has these icons that say I've edited it? I mentioned that earlier. You're going to just right click on the thumbnail, go to export, and then go to export uh, the top export thing. It's going to bring up a window. This is where it gets a little complicated, so follow along here. Just go export. It's going to say export to. This is like where you want it to export to. So you get this little arrow and you say specific folder because you want to choose the folder, right? So I'm going to go to choose because I want to choose the folder. Uh, I'm going to find the folder that I want it to be in, which is Lightroom Tutorial. And this is what I always do. In Lightroom Tutorial folder where my original RAWs, if you remember, that's where I imported them from. I'm going to go new folder and I'm going to title this one processed because this is where all my finished or processed photos are going to go. So I'm going to open that up and I hit select folder. So now it's going to export them to the correct place. So don't export them to just wherever because you'll never be able to find them. Okay, make sure this put in subfolder thing isn't checked because you don't want it to create another folder. We just created one. Okay, where it says file naming, you just check where it says rename and you're going to hit custom settings and you go down here to edit and you can choose what you want it to be. So I'm just going to go Lightroom Tutorial. And then I'm going to hit Insert Sequence Number 1. Because that way it will name it Lightroom Tutorial 1. And the second photo I export, it will name Lightroom Tutorial 2. And so on. Not important though. If you just want to name it whatever, that's fine. So I hit Rename. You scroll down. You can kind of play with the rest of this. Right here it says File Settings. This is really important. Um, normally it's going to look like this. The quality slider is going to control, obviously, the quality of the photo. So I always leave mine on 100. However, if you're going to be putting these on a forum, most of the time they have a file size limit of like 2 megabytes per photo or so. So what you want to do is go limit file size to and just change this to, let's say it was 2,000 or 2 megabytes, which is 2,000 kilobytes. I put 2,000 right here. That way it's going to automatically scale down the quality to fit within that little window. So it will not be bigger than 2,000 kilobytes, which is 2 megabytes. So <clears throat> that's kind of important. So when you do this limit file size, it does lower the quality of the photo a little bit, but not it's not going to be noticeable for sure, especially if you're going to put it on a forum because it's not going to be printed out huge or anything. So once you have that set, I'm going to say I do want to limit the file size. You just hit the export button, and you'll notice up here in the left corner it's telling you it's exporting one file, and it's going to go ahead and export that. And once it does, I'll go ahead and open this up and show you. So I went to process folder and there it is, Lightroom Tutorial 1. And if I zoom in, it's still pretty decent quality. Okay, so now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to edit some other photos just to show you again how these tools work. I'm going to go a little faster here. All right. So I've, I'm done with that photo. By the way, if I wanted to export more than one, I'd click on that thumbnail. Say I'm done editing all these. I just select them all by holding shift and clicking. Right click, export, same thing. And it's going to export them all to that same location. So not ready to do that yet. All right, let's move on to the second one. These are King Midas Zoas. So you notice this one's a, it's a little dark, but it's a very sharp photo. So what again, what I'm going to do is I'm going to crop it first. I'm going to say, all right, I want it to 16 by 10 aspect ratio because I'm going to be using this as a desktop photo when I'm done. So I just drag it. Eh, it looks pretty cool right there. I hit enter to finish cropping it. I notice it's a little too dark and it's way too blue. So I'm going to go to basic, color temperature. I'm going to slide this to the right. You notice right there, now the color is definitely corrected. I don't really even need to mess with the tint, but it's always a good idea just to kind of play with it because you never know. All right, that looks just about right. So I'm done with color temperature. Go to exposure. It's a little too dark. I'm going to bump it up a little bit. That's a little too bright, but I'm I'm not done yet. So I'll go to highlights. There's not really any highlights in this photo. The whole thing is kind of dark, so this isn't really going to do anything. I'll bump them up just a little bit. Okay, shadows. I'm going to bump this down because there's a lot of gray in this photo. Again, you just want to play with these settings all you can. Okay, the whites. I'm going to bump up. Look what this does. I put it flat. Notice how the zoas look. I bump them all the way up. 
which is too much, but it looks a lot brighter. So I am going to leave it up a little bit. Okay, and blacks, so I'm going to bump these down. Yeah, not all the way, but that looks really good right there. So maybe a little too dark, bump this up a little bit again. Okay, so that that's it. It was really fast. So after this, I'm going to go down to detail just to make sure it's not real grainy. I'm going to zoom in on this so I can tell what I'm doing. Luminous noise, I'm going to bump it up just a little bit, probably around 10 or so. Okay, and that's it. So once I have the photo I want, again, I right click right here. I can do this, I, I'm not going to actually export them, I'll export them all at once. One of the cool things you can do is once you're done editing it, you can actually compare it to the original. You click this little thing right here where it has the two windows, and you click it, and look how much better that looks. So this is before, as it's labeled before, and this is after. So you see how much better this photo looks. And it's really cool when you're editing photos, you can see it before and after like that. Okay, and to get it back to normal, you're just going to click this little window. <clears throat> okay, so I'm done with that one. Going to move on to the next one. Like I said, Lightroom is very quick for developing photos. It's very streamlined. It's nice. Okay, so this picture I purposely took kind of blown out up here. See how it's like real highlighted up there? Well, I'll show you how to correct that. <clears throat> First thing, again, I'm going to crop it. And this one actually is... It's pretty good like it is. I took this a little bit too zoomed in. So I'm not going to do too much to it. Let's do it like that. Okay. Press enter to save your crop. Correct the color temperature just a little bit, which this one's not really not too far off. Okay. And by the way, your color temperature settings are going to be different for every photo you take. All right. So exposure is actually fine right now. I know it's blown out up here, but it's the overall exposure is fine. Um, highlights, this is what's going to get rid of this white. So look at this white up here. I'm going to drag the highlights down. See how it recovered that? So you're going to run into that a lot when you're taking reef tank photos. They're going to look like this, like way blown out. All you got to do is drag this highlights thing down to where you want it. You drag it in too far, it does kind of mess up the color a little bit. So I'm just going to put it about right there. Because I don't want to lose all that lighting effect. Okay, so shadows, uh, like I said, just play with everything. I'm going to darken them because it looks kind of cool. Okay, whites. If I bump up the whites, it, since it was blown out up here, it's going to make it seem a little more blown out. So I'm probably going to just bump that down just a little bit. And the blacks, I'm going to lower a little bit. Now my photo is a little too dark, so I'm going to bump the exposure back up just a little bit. All right. Okay. And you'll sit here and play with it. And I find it always helpful to do this comparison thing to just see what it looked like before and after. So you see now it was all blown out and now it's not, right? Okay, so done with that one. I'm not going to bother with the detail and stuff. So I'm going to go ahead and let's see, I'll jump ahead of these A cans. This is kind of a cool picture. So this one was shot a little too dark. So again, cropping it first, picking my aspect ratio. Right there is about good. Hit enter to save your crop. Correct the color temperature. See it really brings out these oranges and these acans that were kind of lost before. So this is how it was taken. But if I move it to the right, see how it's really supposed to be. All right, tint, if I move this to the left, the green's really gonna stand out. You see that? But I don't, it's really fine like it was, so I'm gonna leave it on zero. All right, exposure, I'm gonna leave for now. Uh, highlights. This is the light area, so if you watch that when I mess with highlights, it goes up and down. So I'm gonna I'm actually gonna bump that up a little bit, get a little bit more depth. Okay, shadows are a little too dark. I'm gonna bump those up just a little bit, because this area is too dark. Okay, whites. Again, you're gonna play with it. If you notice when I bump this up, it makes everything seem really like vibrant, which is cool. Okay, and the blacks, you can bump those down a little bit. Okay, and it's still a little dark down here, but that's okay. All right, so before and after, see how much better that looks. A lot more vibrant. The colors are a lot more true to life. Okay, last one we're gonna look at is gonna be one that was taken with a high ISO, <clears throat> which is this one. So process is no different for fish. You're going to crop first. So I'm just gonna keep her right in the center. Hit enter to save my crop. Do need to correct color temperature a little bit. She's not really that blue. Okay, about right there. 
Okay, exposure is fine like it is. Uh, highlights, let's see what that does. Yeah, so that's really messing with the white stripes. She's supposed to be gold stripe maroon. So I'm gonna bump that down just a little bit, make her yellow stand out more. Shadows. Again, you're just gonna play with everything on here just to see how you like it. Your settings are gonna be completely different for every photo, so. All right, so detail. This is this is one that definitely needs some detail correction. If I zoom in all the way, you see how grainy this one is? Look at all the grain on her fin right there. So when I mess with my luminous noise reduction, put this up, watch what happens to the grain. There it goes. It takes a minute to process, but you see how it's gone now? But the, it looks a little muddy, but that's just that's the price you're going to pay. So if I zoom back out, picture looks nice now. So there's no grain really on the photo. And this was taken at an ISO 1600, which on my camera look, usually looks pretty bad. So the luminous noise is going to correct that. All right. And once again, you'll see how much better it looks when it's done here. She looks, instead of being like blown out blue, she looks more purple like she's supposed to. Okay. Oops. So once I'm done, again, to review this, you see the ones with the icons are all the ones I've exported, right? So I'm going to go ahead and select those. I already exported this first one, so I'm not going to do it again, but I'm going to click on this one, hold control, and click on the other ones that I edited. Okay, I'm going to right click on one of the ones that's highlighted, export them. Go to export. I already chose my folder and everything, so that's all good. It's going to rename it to Lightroom Tutorial. And down here, it's still limiting the file size. I just hit export. And it's saying that there's already one with that name, so I'm just going to hit use unique names. It's going to name them a little weird, but that's okay. All right. So, like I said before, once that's done, it's going to appear in this process folder. So don't forget, your photos are not being edited until you export them. Once I export them, they are stuck like that. At least this version will. But if I go up to Lightroom, and even if I've already exported these photos, I can go into Lightroom and I can edit them some more, and it's not going to hurt it. So that's the cool thing. You edit them forever in Lightroom, and it will never permanently alter them. The only time you're getting a permanent version of the picture is when you export it as a JPEG or whatever. All right. So I know that tutorial is a little long, but hopefully I've simplified it enough for you to be able to use Lightroom Effect for your reef photos. Uh, if you have any questions, just please feel free to comment. I'm usually pretty good about answering any questions you have. Uh, if you'd like to get some more info, you can go to my local forum. It's Central Valley Reefers, which our website is cvreefers.org. So I encourage you to join up. There's a lot of knowledgeable people on there, and I do have a f uh, photography guide, so I actually talk about taking the photos also. So if you want to know about that, feel free to join our forum. It's a great group of people. Other than that, thank you for watching.